Hey guys, this video is going to be called Traditional or Digital Ready Fight. And basically what I'm going to talk about is uh, should you work digitally or traditionally or the pros or cons. Uh, and I fully expect to have lots of opinions, which is great. Um, I'm very opinionated, but I'm only one opinion. And so um, I definitely encourage you to get other opinions on this. And I'm sure you can read the comments. I got an email today, and and I, and this was a really good one um, from Amanda, and um, I'll just read some of it here. What she's saying is that she's been painting for 20 years, so she's very accomplished in um, in her traditional style, and um, she's just, she's been a stay-at-home mom, but then now she's going to go get back into it again and and get going on it more. I guess as her kids are probably grown, uh, she wants to do children's book illustration and uh, card, <clears throat> excuse me, card stationery. And so she has a question, and her question is: um, So I was talking on Facebook today, and I had made a comment about managing your work digitally. So she says, my question is um, towards the digital management of my work. I saw someone ask you a question on Facebook on your Facebook page about traditional illustration and painting versus using the computer and you answer that there's room for traditional work as long as you can digitally manage it. Could you expand on what you mean by this? I do not have Photoshop or anything else like this on my computer. I paint by hand and then scan the image in. Is this enough? Do I have to go down the computer drawing route? If so, what's the absolute basic for this? So that's a great question and I thought it, it really deserved to get some good answers because I feel like well, I mean, I get asked this all the time, and it's it's constantly an issue. And I think we've been, um, I mean, the, the whole being able to work digital is so new re relatively. I mean, you know, you people have been working digitally for probably, you know, maybe 20 or 30 years, but uh, really only in the last probably 10 to 20 years has it gotten to where you could you could easily do it. Um, so it's really just it's it's really fairly new. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I have six points that I want to talk about. Uh, the first one is to think about is that all work will end up digitally if all commercial work will end up digitally at some point. Um, in other words, even if it's going to be printed in a book, it has to be scanned, which you already mentioned, Amanda. Um, and so where where I think that that factors in is that since everything is going to end up um, going becoming digital um, that to me that means that every piece of artwork whether it's created traditionally or digitally is going to be pixelated if you zoom in on it and that means that if it, if it can actually show up in a JPEG image or in a, in a Photoshop file or anything like that chances are there's a there's also a way to create it digitally so I want to just kind of throw that out there uh, not always, and sometimes uh, people can't actually get the same exact technique digitally, obviously. Um, but it's just something to think about that your work will end up having to become digitized either by you or by the, the client. Um, which brings me to the second point, that there are some clients, and clients are all over the place, but there are some clients who will only work with artists who can provide um, digital finished files. Now, that means that um, they will ask what, you know, they'll find out from you, um, you know, how you are going to send in your work. And if you say, well, I can send you the artwork, then you'll lose the job. There are definitely clients who absolutely will not work with you unless you can provide them with digital files. So you mentioned scanning, being able to scan your images. And, and what I meant with by managing your image um, which I was going to make that my number five, but I think I'm just going to, it's naturally going to flow in right here, is that once you scan it, can you do any kind of color correction that needs to be done? Can you do any value correction, um, contrast and brightness and all that kind of stuff, hue saturation, um, things like that? And will it look good when it's printed because you're looking at your monitor and the client's going to be looking at something different? Um, and what I found on that, as far as on that front, is that the higher end clients that you work with, um, let's say you're working with Random House or Penguin or HarperCollins or somebody like that, 
um, and and not even that they don't have to be that high end, but even a lot of the the textbook companies, they they constantly work with um, people who know how to take a digital file and turn it into CMYK. Um, I will throw this out there that I recommend that you work in RGB. If you are going to work digitally for anybody, and this goes beyond you, Amanda, this is for anybody watching this. Um, that's typically the common the common uh, advice is to work in RGB mode if you're working in Photoshop or another program and then switch that over to CMYK afterwards and you'll find that when you switch it you'll, your teals and your blues and greens will tend to kind of merge together and so if you had strong bluish greens and strong blues they will end up looking similar um, and that's that's probably the area that are that's lost the most however there are experts at that that um, when you work for those higher-end clients that can actually take those files and they do an amazing job they do way, way better than I could do at switching that to CMYK and making the adjustments to hold it the color um, a lot has to do with the kind of printing that they're gonna do um, if your if your end product is going to indeed be printed um, but back to the number two um, I would say your goal should be whether you're working traditionally or whether you're working digitally your goal should be to be able to provide those digital files because that's going to put you in the running for doing a lot of any work for anybody because all they care about is those digital files the reason for that is they don't want you sending in artwork because if it gets lost or damaged or stolen then they're responsible for it and they have to pay you and I did a job once for Backpacker Magazine and they lost the artwork and they ended up having to pay again and the, a lot of the lower end clients have gone into the we're not going to be responsible anymore we don't have to be responsible anymore because there are so many digital artists to choose from that we can eliminate all the traditional ones and the, that's typically I would say the type of client that's not going to work with you unless you work digitally is going to be I hate to say I shouldn't say lower end client because there's definitely some some higher end people but definitely not in the trade book publishing world so number three is for the trade book publishing markets the image matters more than anything else okay for the trade book publishing market the image matters more than anything else so that means that they are totally willing to work with you if you work traditionally and they'll even accept your artwork they don't really like it usually and they usually um, the lower you are on the totem pole the more they want digital work it's like if, if they're gambling on you and you're a first-time artist it's one more strike against you that they have to get original work however and this is this is where things are kind of flowing around and changing but where my number six I'm gonna move, move that in now too is I had um, Brett Helquist at my house uh, last week and he if you don't know who he is he is uh, the illustrator who illustrated the series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket and it was made into a movie with uh, Jim Carrey and all that um, and we're good friends and we went to school together and I actually ironically and this wasn't um, this wasn't planned or anything but I bought the house that we just recently moved into is literally three houses down from where he grew up and his parents still live there so it's kind of funny but um but anyway he was over here and we got to talking and you know he I know he still works tr uh, traditionally but he's also started to move into doing uh, some of the prep work digitally and then printing that on paper and then painting on top of that one of the things that he mentioned that I thought was very interesting and also I wanted to work into one of these um, vlogs is that um, w one of the biggest things that he says he'll give up if he completely switches to digital is the fact that it's um, he is actually an, kind of an anomaly now I mean like most I think Amanda you mentioned this in your letter that most people seem to be working digitally and I would say I would say yeah it seems to me like at least half or more than half of the people out there are now working digitally and a lot of the big name uh, children's book illustrators are also working digitally so what he said is when when he brings in his artwork for a for a book it's like the whole floor of the publisher shuts down and everybody comes in from every single office it's like it's like a huge event and he's like I don't know if I'm really wanting to give that up because it's like a party atmosphere and the thing that it really does for him is it 
it sets him apart from other illustrators and it gets him other people get to meet him that maybe have more recent hires and stuff and they'll come in and, and get to meet him and so I think he thinks that it's giving him a little more clout in some ways because he's still working traditionally and it's there's nothing like seeing the originals come in you know and and, and seeing how it's done and 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 examining them and looking at them they're artifacts you know they're they're really cool things so the coolness factor now having said that though the problem is if you're on the low rung and no one really knows who you are or cares about you that ends up being a strike against you because they're not going to be that excited it's going to be more of a uh, you know kind of a oh no we've got to we've got to spend extra money to send these out to get them scanned uh, we have to take very good care of them we have to we have to uh, package them up and then ship them back to you and uh, so typically they don't want to get those originals um, and if you can send in your own um, scans now that might generate another question how do I scan it how do I get a good scan probably one of the best things you can do is buy a, a 11 by 17 flatbed scanner and learn how to um, if your image if your work is larger than that now you've got uh, with Photoshop you've got um, it with I think Photoshop 6 maybe 5 I think I know from 6 and then the, the, the Creative Cloud they've got a thing called photo merge where if you have to do two passes on the scanner to actually uh, get your work scanned uh, and piece it together photo merge will do it for you in Photoshop with a click of a button it's amazing but it's actually not that hard to sew your images together uh, manually too if you, if you know how to do it um, so yeah so going back to number three for the trade book markets image matters more than anything else I would say that is totally true for the higher end books uh, what the client cares about is can they the, the image matters to them more than anything else and it's really refreshing to in a, in a world where uh, you know we've gone to digital and fast things and just things that don't matter in publishing the image is king I mean next to the story the story ha I mean is one thing but the two parts are very well respected and so that's I think a goal to get moved up into that world where um, where you're you're basically the dog wagging the tail so to speak because you're saying look this is how I work if you hired me because you saw what was in my portfolio if you want to get what I'm what I'm creating here you're gonna have to deal with these originals and they're willing to do that that's one of the last places in illustration however that I think will um, bow down and, and deal you know um, is publishing and and traditional publishing too there's a lot of there are a lot of artists uh, uh, like Greg Manchester who does amazing work and he's, he paints in oils and does book covers and things like that and um, and and so it just you know that's an area that respects your your artwork but in advertising illustration and um, and a lot of different types of um, illustration I would say editorial uh, probably as well um, they don't want to deal with your artwork so it's really helpful to figure out how to scan and send those images yourself but I would say if if you're if you don't and this is to you Amanda if you don't if you can't manipulate that image and change it you know if, if a corner of the the scan is going dark because your scanner isn't exactly perfect and that happens with scanners a lot um, if you can't adjust that and make that right or let's say you scan it and you see something in the art that some little imperfections that could be fixed really quickly um, in Photoshop but instead you know you have to go back and paint and then rescan and everything it digital working digitally makes you faster I mean it's just I don't know anybody who's who used to work um, traditionally and then has switched to digital where it's taking them longer it's always it always cuts the time down and time is money and if you're working um, like I am right now I've got a couple of jobs that there's no way I could I could be working on both of them if I was working traditionally I would have had to turn one of them down um, and so that's super important to be able to I think um, shave time off um, by, by working digitally I will say this uh, my number four is you shouldn't go straight to digital unless you work traditionally first and I I'm basing that on um, everyone that I know that has a unique style uh, digitally and there are probably some ex 
I know there's going to be exceptions to this, and I know people will probably put exceptions in the comments, and that's fine. Um, but again, I'm talking in, in generalities. I'm talking about the majority of people. Um, I think it's a mistake to start out digitally, um, but there's an, there's an unless on that. The reason for that, I think it's I think it's best to start out traditionally is when you when you move to tr to digital, there are stock tools that you have to work with, and everyone's approach seems to be really similar when you start out digitally. So the problem is twofold. One is that your work will look like everyone else, um, and it's really hard to separate yourself from everyone else digitally, and that's going to be a problem because why hire you? if you look like every other beginning artist out there. There's really no reason to hire you. I can hire the other guy that looks exactly like you. Clients are looking for unique styles. It's hard to look unique. The reason for that is because uh, painting or, and drawing like anything else is a process. It's, I like to uh, liken it to walking. The reason that we all learned how to walk is because we had consequences. Uh, when you're walking and you you fall when you're a baby and you, you fall and you crack your head on the coffee table. That's a consequence. And you, in your mind, you, you, you realize that you did something wrong. And over time, through tripping and falling, you realize that you have to pick up your feet. And that there is something different that you have to do each time to prevent yourself from falling. Maybe it's bracing on the couch and holding on. Uh, but there are, there are adjustments that you have to make to develop the process of walking. Process, walking isn't just a w one step thing. It's, you know, it's probably with our brain, there's probably 20 or 100 things we've got to do right in order to actually walk. Um, and painting is the same thing. Um, you have to uh, learn by consequences. So you have to paint, make a mistake, and then live. The most important thing is you have to live by that mistake. And uh, my computer just kind of went to sleep on me right there. I hope it's still, it looks like it's still recording. But yeah, so the problem with going straight to digital is you have undo and you have layers. And when you can throw away layers that didn't work or when you can just hit undo, 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 or step backwards uh, in Photoshop, then what you're doing is you're living a lot, kind of living a lie, really. You're living a life of zero consequence. And so what we see in school, when I teach at UVU or I see online with uh, SVS, I see uh, people with Photoshop files that have you know 20, 30, 40, 50 layers, uh, crazy amounts of layers, and that's a process that's really hard to repeat because what's happening is um, most people are, are getting these other layers because they're they don't they're afraid to make a commitment because once they make a commitment they can't undo it, and so they end up with this process that that is convoluted that they can't reproduce the second time. So even if they do come up with something that they like, they can't re reproduce that same exact process. Painting is a process, and if you watch any master painter, they go through the exact same process every time, and it's very, uh, it's, it's very unlike what a lot of people think artists do. A lot of people think artists are messy, and they just kind of slop stuff around, and then things just sort of happen. Most artists, and I'm talking about commercial artists, most, most uh, illustrators have a very, very simple step-by-step -step process. Um, it's a lot like baking cookies. You know, the more you do it, the better you get. But really, even homemade cookies or, or brownies, there's, there's only a few ingredients. And the, the process is very simple. And if you repeat it every time, you get the same results. That's really what a, what a, what a good illustrator goes through. So I know this is kind of a long-winded way of saying it, but uh, most of the people who don't learn to paint traditionally, I find, look very predictable when they're working digitally. Now, here's the unless. Here's the here's the thing that I think that you can do to maybe trick that. And I don't know anybody who's done this. This is just a suggestion. But if you could force yourself to work digitally like you would traditionally by not using layers and not using undo and forcing yourself to live by consequence, then I think it would be possible to learn a really good style and a really good painting process, um, but if you're not uh, if you're not living by consequences, if you're not being affected by those consequences, uh, I just don't see it. And I see a lot of people flounder, and I see them never really come up with something that they like or that other people respond to. And I think that's because they don't ever live by those consequences. So I hope I answered your question, Amanda, and I hope I went. Oh, I'm, 
I'm sure I went beyond that, but basically the idea is um, you need to be able to manipulate those images um, and get them the way that you want before you send them off, and you need to be able to, to obviously send those digital files. I hope this helped, and if you like this video, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.